Where do demons come from? Are they all the same? Is it the Twisting Nether that created them? What exactly is the Twisting Nether? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to each and every one of you. Now, you may be forgiven for immediately saying, Akalon, we already know where the demons come from. They come from the Twisting Nether. We know where the Twisting Nether comes from. It's where the light and the void clashed most fiercely. And that created the pocket dimension known as the Twisting Nether, where the foul came from. The foul created the demons. The demons attack life. And so on and so forth. What if I told you that there is a lot of lore in World of Warcraft that kind of contradicts that very, very sentiment? More importantly, even the story of the origins of the Nathrazim lies in question to some extent. The problem with most of this is, do we believe the latest evidence? Do we believe the earliest evidence? Or do we believe that the reason these multitude of tales that seemingly contradict one another exist is because of a breakdown in language. I'll explain to you what I mean by that. The Titans have one word that means both ordering and also creation. This creates a number of confusions for the average reader because the Titans will oftentimes claim to have created a thing, but it could just be that they ordered this thing, they themselves never actually created this thing. Or they could say they ordered this thing, and then it actually means that they created this thing, they didn't just order this thing. So you can see how there could be a breakdown from uh, the elements and from the sources that give us these, uh, this information. As I said, the original tales of the demons is that they were simply created or born within the Twisting Nether. And one of the key theories, one of the theories that sort of existed for a very long time, is that demons were originally mortal beings or beings of flesh that got caught in the ever-expanding Twisting Nether realm. So as a world got dragged into the nether and the foul energy started to corrupt that world, the animals that existed on that planet would then be corrupted and turned into these demonic forms. This holds a lot of water purely because we know that this is a thing that happens. One of the biggest lore examples of this would be Cantharod. Uh, I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly if I am not, but it's during the Green Warlock questline. And I want to give a massive shout out to Gwyneth over on Discord for bringing this questline to my attention. Cantharod was a warlock. He was once the leader of the Council of the Black Harvest. Now, I'm going to have a whole video actually talking about the Council of the Black Harvest and explaining what exactly the Council of the Black Harvest has to do because their duties and their history is incredibly storied and actually like, criminally underreported in the World of Warcraft universe. But that's not now, so don't worry about that. Now, Cantharod was a normal human warlock. Very powerful, very wise, but Cantharod had a bit of a different view on a demon practice or demonology, as it's known for warlocks. For him, the idea wasn't just that you need to glean as much information about the demons, that you should be wary of the Twisting Nether. No, he, he actually believed that if he could find a way to merge himself with the demonic energies, if he could take the foul into himself, he could glean so much more knowledge about the actual universe and how the universe operates and also give Warlock so much more access to magic from the Twisting Nether. The problem for Cantharod was that he severely underestimated the corrupting properties of the Twisting Nether. And believe me, that's the biggest problem with it. For Demon Hunters, they require a series of increasingly complex arcane ruins as well as forges to basically prepare their bodies to be able to resist the foul. Warlocks don't do this. Warlocks simply rely on their mental acuity, their mental ability to keep the Twisting Nether or the foul from corrupting them. This almost always leads to a bit of a trade-off for Warlocks. They can summon demons and they can use the foul, but there's limitations. Too much and they give in and the demons take over and fuck, now you become the enemy, you become the right boss. So there, there's always been a little bit of a, a balance that needs to be struck there. The biggest mistake I think that a lot of players make in World of Warcraft is they think of demons as a singular entity. And everyone knows that there's different demons, right? There's foul guards and foul hunters and imps and void walkers. And void walkers is actually of the void, but somehow found themselves in the, inside the Twisting Nether. So the Twisting Nether really is a weird place with a lot of diversity actually within it. But 
when you ask people, right, demons, everyone has a unified idea about what demons actually are. And that is contradicted in this story that Gwyneth gave me over on Discord, because we learn that there are actually multiple different types of demons. If you were to think of, think in the way that demons think about stuff, what is far more likely is that imps think of imps as imps and as themselves. They are a community. But imps don't necessarily look at foul hunters as part of their community. So there's no real crossover. It's not like, for example, on Azeroth, where an orc and a human, both different races, but they both view themselves as mortals and they view their wants and needs as very, very similar. This is not true for the basic demons of the Twisting Nether. Now, it's still true, and this is why I said, remember in the beginning where I said that the, the prevailing theory is that they're just animals that got corrupted? This can still be true for a vast majority of demons, like Foul Hunters, like Imps, Void Walkers almost certainly come from the Void. Uh, even the Shivara, could, this could probably be true for them, although I would argue as you move more and more into the exotic, demons so for example your foul guards uh, your shavaras uh, even uh, your your succubi uh, doom guards these exotic uh, demons appear to all have a very different story to the story that we think they have so i'll give you guys this example doom guards in the green foul quest line Cantharod corners a doom god and it asks the doom god about the origins of the, the demons, of the doom god specifically. The doom god is baffled. The doom god doesn't understand. Why would you ask? Our own kind doesn't even give a shit about our origins. So why would you care? And Cantharod, you know, obviously rebukes the demon. Like, shut the fuck up. Tell me what you know. Right? And the demon just very nonchalantly tells him, well, we used to be the titan's lapdog our job was to hunt down anyone that uh, used sacrificial magics and if they used sacrificial magics we were to punish them in fact the titans not only enslaved the doom guards to do this to do this job but they also attuned the doom guards to this which is why very often in World of Warcraft, when people do practice sacrificial magic, demons are oftentimes not very far behind because the Doom Guards specifically are naturally attuned to feel this. They feel this reverberate throughout the ages. Doom Gods, obviously then, suggests they come from somewhere completely different. They were not always demons. In fact, the Doom Guard states that it was Sargeras that freed them from the titans enslavement and since then they have now spent their time actually practicing it themselves because actually to them sacrificial magic is delicious and it's beautiful the, the problem however is we don't actually know if the doom guards were always demons and that they were enslaved by the titans as demons to hunt down this magic or perhaps they had a much more ancient culture perhaps they were once mortal or at least mortal beings as we would think about mortal beings on azeroth so they could be immortal like the night elves but they, they were still flesh if you will and the enslaving process forcing them to use things like the twisting nether to get around because remember if you're going to track down sacrificial magic throughout the great beyond you need to kind of use the twisting nether in order to do it uh that could be why they look the way that they look they were completely corrupted this would show a very dark side of the Titans, a side that I think a lot of people want to pretend doesn't exist. The Titans don't have this dark side, but it is shown. Now, the reason I think I'm drawn to the idea that most of the exotic demons like Observers and Chavaras and Doom Guards and even Foul Guards to some extent, all of your, what we would call your more intelligent demons, the reason I think most of them have this very rich origin story with actual civilizations that were once proud before they were corrupted by cosmic forces uh, comes from the Nathrazine. In this very quest line, there is an observer 
that you speak to, your own observer. And your observer has a very interesting thing that it says. Now, remember, observers were the, the, the allies or the servants of Illidan. They didn't actually serve the Legion, which is very interesting. Observers are considered to be the most intelligent of all demons, and they refused to serve the, the Burning Legion. Some did, but the vast majority didn't. They actually allied with Illidan specifically, not with uh, Sargeras and the rest of the Legion. So clearly they saw something completely different, and there's something we're going to talk about there, but not for now. Let's just get through the, 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 the story about the Nathrazim. According to this observer, the Nathrazim was once a very proud civilization. They were completely different. They looked completely different to what they look like now. And then they were corrupted. They were taken from their home world and they were turned into something else. Now, many of us, if you've played through Shadowlands, you know that Syed and Athras is the one who created the Nathrazim. But I'll remind you, the Titans who also come from Azeroth realm have one word for create and ordered and it's the same word because they don't view it as a difference there is every reason to believe that the eternal ones have the exact same problem because their language also stems from the first ones the same way the titans language do so to the eternal ones ordered created it's the same thing it doesn't really matter and so it could be that Syed and Athreus, instead of creating the Nathrazim from scratch actually found this planet this world and then corrupted this world right or took the denizens of this world and corrupted it an interesting thought here may actually be the story of the light and why the light ultimately ended up attacking Ravendraith. we're told in the shadowlands that the light attacked after they kidnapped a naru what if the original nathrazim were actually beings of light and then after uh, the Naru they captured was after he went and captured the Nathrazim. And he took the Naru as a bauble, as a, as a funny little gag, I guess you could say. Obviously, he didn't understand quite how desperately Light wanted that Naru back. But anyways, right? Uh, that's just to give you credence or give you some evidence of their existing these stories. Now, you could make the argument, but Aquilon wouldn't side and Athreus being a later addition in the lore retcon this original lore and yeah it's entirely possible although i don't think it's important uh i think you could explain it with just the evidence on the table as it exists right now but here's something very very interesting about demons that i think a lot of people don't really think about not all of the demons followed sargeras in fact if you read the lore most of the demons didn't. Yes, there are demons who decided to side with Sargeras and follow Sargeras, but there's also many, many demons who fled. As soon as Sargeras announced this new Burning Legion, these demons, demons took their shit and ran away. Why? Well, I don't know why. I can't answer that. What I can tell you is this shows us an interesting duality within demons. Demons aren't mindless. They're, they're not just, you know, you point them in the direction and they run and they eat. Demons are, are clearly intelligent enough to make decisions. They could listen to what Sargeras wanted from them and they could argue, well, that doesn't sound good. We don't want to be a part of that. And therefore they left. Where they went, we don't know. The lore, sadly, on the Twisting Nether is rather sparse, but... It's interesting, nonetheless. Finally, I want to talk about foul and foul corruption. Foul corruption is very weird. What I mean by that is void corruption is, is from what we understand at least, nearly irreversible. Once you've been corrupted by the void, the madness completely takes over and you are just mad. There's no real coming back from that. Other instances where people have been able to come back from the void yeah, kind of, but most of the time that's because the Void pulled back themselves, not so much that you managed to gain clarity over the Void. So it, it's a, it's kind of weird with the Void. Fal, on the other hand, is very interesting. And again, the story here comes from Cantharod, who, by the way, the story of the Green uh, Green, green Fal uh, Warlock quest chain, 
uh, actually, Kandarad's story is pretty insane. He he was so thirsty for knowledge that he ultimately ended up... He came upon a font, just to, just to later. The Forge of Souls inside the Black Temple. This forge was what gave Illidan the ability to absorb this, you know, the amount of foul energy and not be corrupted. At least that's what Kantharad thought. Kantharad at the time didn't have the information about the arcane runes that was also required and the entire ritual of death and rebirth that needed to happen in order to become a, a sort of foul hunter, foul demon, demon hunter kind of thing. Uh, Kantharad just thought that this forge would give him access to all of the foul magic and he would not be corrupted because he theorized that's what Illidan did. So he did exactly that. And he fucked around. He found out. He became a demon. That's right. He became a monstrosity. And he had Jubeka, his trusty sidekick, promise to banish him forever should he turn into a demon. Should he fail to be able to resist the temptations of the demonic uh, Twisting Nether. He couldn't stand. He didn't stand a chance. And he did eventually turn into a demon, although that would happen much, much later, not originally. Now, once he was a demon, we actually have a questline in Legion that shows us cleansing Cantharod of being a demon. And the interesting thing here is we siphoned all of the foul magic out of him and he became human once again, suggesting foul magic its corruption isn't permanent, which should surprise you and also baffle you a little. Almost all other corruptions are permanent. And once you are, for example, a servant of the old gods and you start growing tentacles, then be your tentacles. There's no real coming back from that. But with the Twisting Nether, it's almost like you're just putting on a costume. It doesn't really corrupt the body body as much as it corrupts the visuals but the body remains intact because he suffered no consequences once the twisting nether or the foul was completely siphoned out of him i thought that was just ridiculously interesting and i'm not entirely sure what to glean from that little bit of information i have not figured that out yet maybe one of you can let me know in the comment section down below anyways that's gonna do it from me i hope you enjoyed this video about the twisting nether and the demons what do you think the demons are and where do you think they came from? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this where I don't let the video with sponsorships that want to sell you stuff that you do not need, $1 a month over on Patreon is all I ask. You guys pay me so I don't have to say yes to sponsorships. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and as always, peace.